Thank you all so much for joining me today as we explore the new features of the NumWorks Graphing Calculator. My name is Matt Blevins and I am a math teacher in residence at NumWorks. I am very excited to dig into the new and updated features coming out with software version 21. We are going to explore some new features from version 21 that make the NumWorks Graphing Calculator even better for students and teachers. Some of our major features are plotting points and lists of points, regression information saved to the VAR key, calculating the value of the mean or the standard deviation from a normal distribution, adding a sum row in sequences, notation reminders in calculation, importing NumPy and Python, and there are so many more. But we're going to go through each application individually to see how they have been improved. At the end, I will provide a URL where you can explore all of the additional features in more detail. Let's dive into some of these new features, starting with the calculation application. The first update I'll share is our common log display. Now when you press the log key on the calculator, the calculator will display log base 10 to remind you that the common log has a base of 10. you can still access the log base a function in the toolbox if you need to calculate a log expression with a different base. Let's calculate a log base 3 of 27. But you can also change the base after pressing the common log key. Simply press the common log key and navigate to the base by pressing the left arrow key twice. Delete the 10 and input the base of your choice. For this example, I'll compute a log base 2 of 16. Another new feature within the calculation app applies to evaluating trig functions. Have you ever tried to evaluate sine of 30 degrees but forget that you're in radian mode? Or maybe you input cosine of pi over 2 but you're in degree mode. We now remind you of the angle unit if the input seems odd. For example, notice that my calculator is currently in radian mode. I want to evaluate sine of 30 degrees, so I'll input sine of 30. Since I'm in radian mode, this is actually evaluating sine of 30 radians. After pressing execute, notice that the NumWorks calculator adds the units RAD for radians to the end of the value 30. This reminds me that I just computed sine of 30 radians and not 30 degrees. This reminder doesn't appear after computing a trig value on an angle that appears to be a radian value. For example, computing sine of pi over 2 and pressing execute will not add the reminder about radians. Let's see how this works if your settings are set to degrees. Let's press the home key and navigate down to the settings app. Did you know you can press the zero key to jump to settings? Now I'll change the angle measure settings to degrees. Notice how the calculator has DEG in the top banner indicating the change. Let's go back to the calculation application. You can press 1 to go straight back to the calculation app. Now in degrees, computing sine of 30 will show no indication of a degree symbol, but computing the sine of pi will display a degree symbol at the end of the angle to remind the user about units. Next, let's head to the grapher application. To begin, let's press OK to access our templates. With version 21, we now support plotting points and lists of points in the grapher app, and you'll see two new templates in the menu. You can press OK on these templates to edit them as needed. For example, I'll press OK on the point template. Notice that with version 21, you now edit the expression directly in the field, not in an editing bar on the bottom of the screen. This is true for inputting expressions in the grapher application, equations in the equation app, 
and sequences in the Sequence app. Let's use our arrows to navigate inside the point and change the point to negative 3, 4. Press OK or Execute to confirm the point you've created. I'll also add a list of points. Navigate down to add an element. Instead of using the template, we can also enter the list directly using the keyboard. To begin the list, use the Shift key followed by the log key for the curly bracket. Now input the points one at a time using parentheses around the point and a comma to separate the X and Y values. Let's do 1, 4 first. After completing a point in the list, use a comma to separate one point from another. And then we will add negative 3, negative 4. We'll add another comma and we're going to add the point 1, negative 4. Do not include a comma after your last ordered pair. Press OK or Execute to confirm your list of points. In addition to supporting points, we've also added the ability to support polar equations in the form of theta equals, which allows you to graph lines in polar form. Let's add the polar line theta equals 45 degrees. Navigate down to the Add an Element. We don't have a template for this, but you can access the theta sign by pressing the XNT key four times. Then input the equal sign by doing Shift, Pi, and lastly the angle of your choice, in this case 45. I don't need R for this expression, but you could add it by doing alpha 4. Now that we have these three expressions typed in, let's go look at the options we have available for them. Navigate to the three dots and press OK. For points and list of points, you can change the color, toggle them off, or delete them. Backing out, we can look at the three dots for the polar line. Here you can change the color, change the plot restriction, toggle them off, or delete them. For the plot restrictions, you can restrict the R values you want the line to cover. For the graphs of these types of expressions, you can use your up and down arrows to navigate between expressions, and left and right to move through the expression's graph. For the table of values, we have the input value R for the output value theta. The last update for the graph or application is for computing integrals. Very quickly, I'm going to clear out my points and polar expression. Now let's add the function x cubed minus 7x plus 4. Let's navigate to the graph and use the toolbox to, to access the find menu. Navigate down to Integral and press OK. Before version 21, we could only compute integrals when the lower bound was less than the upper bound. Now we can compute backwards integrals where the lower bound is greater than the upper bound. For example, let's set the lower bound to 2 and the upper bound to negative 2 and press Execute. We have also added the ability to store the output of the integral value. Here, I can press Shift, x to the power of y, and store the integral value negative 16 as a value by pressing alpha, followed by the letter you'd like to use. In this case, we'll use the letter A. And then click Execute. Next, let's head to the Equation application. Our international baccalaureate teachers ask that when solving systems of equations with infinite solutions, we would return parametric solutions, and we wanted to make that happen. Let's solve the following system. 2x plus 2y plus 2z equals negative 2, 2x plus 3y plus 2z equals 4, and x plus y plus z equals negative 1. 
Now when we navigate down to solve the system and press OK, we report there are an infinite number of solutions as well as a parametrized solution where x equals negative t minus 7, y equals 6, and z equals t. The next update we will look at is related to the statistics app. For this example, I'll use a safe simulator session that already has data entered. Note that I've already added data in the V1 list and frequency column. While you've been able to fill list with a formula, in version 21 we've added the ability to reevaluate or edit the formula you used. For example, the V1 list was generated with the fill with formula integers 1 to 10. To edit this formula, navigate to the top of the list and press OK, then fill with formula and press OK. Notice the formula that I used to create this list pops up at the bottom in an editable field so it can be adjusted as needed. Let's change the formula to K minus 1 and change the upper limit to 11. This will change the V1 list to 0 through 10. We've also updated the cumulative frequencies graph. Let's head to the graph tab and select cumulative frequencies. You can move left and right on the graph to see different cumulative frequencies for given values. But now you can use your number pad to jump directly to a value of your choice. For example, I'll input 8.6 and press OK. The next update we will look at is related to the regression app. For this example, I'll use a saved simulator session that already has data entered and a regression model added. Note that I've already added data and a line of best fit to the data in the first data set. In the statistics application, we just showed that a previously used formula could be edited. You can also reevaluate the formula if needed. For example, the values of the second data set were created by pulling the values of the first, but switching their order. That is, x2 equals y1 and y2 equals x1. Let's say that we want to add a new point to the first data set 2015. You'll notice that the second data set does not automatically copy these values but we can easily reevaluate the formula we used by returning the fill with formula option. Simply navigate to the top of the X2 list and click OK to open the column options. Then select fill with formula. Okay. Notice the formula we used is already displayed. Simply press the OK key to reevaluate. We'll do the same for Y2. In version 21, we added the standard deviation for residuals in the Stats tab. You can find this in the second to last row right above the coefficient of determination. You can now use regression information in other applications of the calculator. Notice that the regression model we've created is Y equals negative 1.33x plus 39.9. Let's navigate to other apps to see how this works. Press the home key. To start, we will enter the calculation application and press the var key. In addition to accessing the lists x1 and y1, you can now access the regression function r1 of x from the function section. This is helpful in the calculation application if you wanted another method of generating predicted values. Just press OK and input the X value. For example, I can find R1 of 21. And then press Execute. Next, let's head to the Grapher application. 
Now I can use the var key to grab the regression expression, r1 of x, input x, to have this appear in the grapher. I can also add my scatter plot to the grapher by inputting the point x1, y1. The next update we will look at is the distribution app. Let's navigate home and to the distribution app and explore the normal distribution. In version 21, we've added the prompt at the bottom of the screen to say, leave a field empty to calculate the corresponding value. This means that you can remove the mean or standard deviation value and solve for that missing value if you have the other and a probability statement. For example, maybe we know the mean of a data set is 15, but do not know the standard deviation. Let's input 15 for the mean, and delete the standard deviation, and press OK. Press OK to go to the next screen. Here you can see we are being reminded that the mean is 15, have a probability statement and there is no curve drawn. The bottom displays that sigma is undefined. Let's input a probability that we know about our data. Let's assume the probability that x is less than or equal to 14 is 0.25. Pressing execute will draw the curve as well as display the standard deviation of 1.48. Back on the home screen, some final things to note in the settings application. Now at the bottom of the settings we have test modes available. Here's where you can find the press to test section of the calculator that allows you to disable individual aspects of the calculator. The only new update in this section is we've split implicit plots and grapher details into two separate sections. Now you can choose to turn off the graph details but still keep the ability to do implicit equations and vice versa. And last but not least, let's back out and look at the exam modes we now offer. Here in this section, we worked closely with some exam boards to develop exam modes for their exams. Here you can see modes for the STAR exam in Texas, Keystone for Pennsylvania, SC for South Carolina, and IB for the IB exam. Once activated, the top banner will display a graduation cap as well as an identifier for the exam. For example, the STAR exam mode will have a TX and a graduation cap in the top banner. As a reminder, the only way to get the handheld out of exam mode is to connect it to a computer. If you would like to learn even more about the version 21 update, you can read more about all the updates in version 21 along with a complete version history on our website, numworks.com slash calculator slash update or you can scan the QR code with your mobile device. At NumWorks, many of our best new features start from teacher feedback. We would love to hear what you think about version 21. Simply type the URL into your browser or scan the QR code to launch the feedback survey. You must be logged into your NumWorks account to access the survey. Thank you for learning more about what is new in version 21. If you have any questions, you can always contact us at contact at numworks.com.